everybody, it's Professor Michelson. I'm actually now recording our last lecture for this class. Uh, the topic is media images of gender and crime. Um, the reason that I put this topic last is because I'd like you to spend your time uh, as you do your reading for today and as you um, uh, work on your worksheet for today. I'd like you to really incorporate everything that you've learned, really the facts about gender and crime, about um, women and men as perpetrators, as victims of crime, and also as workers in the criminal justice system, and then compare them to what you see in the media. Uh, I'd like to talk about um, not as a gendered example, but as a media example. I love to talk about CSI. Uh, in fact, a number of scholars have actually discussed and uh, attorneys talk about something called the CSI effect, which um, refers to the fact that juries expect very sophisticated technology when they get into a courtroom now because they've seen it on TV. Um, and, for example, if you watch the regular CSI, nobody except me does anymore, <laughs> I think. <laughs> but I like it. I watch it while I'm grading. Um, and, you know, somebody, whoever's on there anymore, Nick, you know, gets a sample from the crime scene. He walks over to Hodgins and he says, hey, can you run this for me? And Hodgins says, sure, I'll do it right now. The reality is that um, the U.S. government... Uh, puts, has recently put out a number of different solicitations, advertised uh, solicitations, looking for people to research how we can get rid of backlogs. We have so much forensic data in our system that there are literally years worth of backlogs that we don't know how to dig through. Nobody's walking rape kits through to some guy who's got a fancy big office and just pops it into a machine. The backlogs are such that we have to put together money to pay people to see if they can help us figure out the problem. And the reason I bring that up, which, well, it sort of has to do with gender, because a lot of it is rape kits, and as we know, um, women are more likely than men to be raped, and uh, they're, uh, but they're also not very likely to report it. And, you know, there's a lot of gender going on in there. But the reason that I bring that up is because our perception is driven by media, but the reality can be totally different. I'm sure there are plenty of cases where the media does a very good job of representing um, the reality, but often uh, they do a terrible job because it gets us to watch more TV or movies or listen to more music, um, and therefore buy the ads that are associated with it. Anyway, for this class, you guys read uh, one of three articles. Um, the first uh, has to do with rape in prison movies. I know that one of the last um, sort of frontiers of what's okay to make a joke about, rape joke about, is prisoner rape. Uh, laughing about dropping the soap, uh, for example, in prison, which refers to somebody being naked in the shower, dropping the soap and bending over, and then being raped. Um, is something that, in general, people feel pretty okay with joking about, which is interesting. Because uh, it's joking about a male rape where I doubt that people would feel nearly as comfortable joking about a female being raped. And the article asks us to question that and why it's okay for us in popular culture to joke about males being raped versus um, not feeling comfortable with, with females being raped, particularly in a class of men. If you remember back to our discussions about theories of masculinity um, and... Um, and how there are different classes of men, different types of men, hegemonic masculinity being men who are in power and in control, often white, often rich, often from particular parts of the world, um, versus other types of men uh, who perhaps are poor, perhaps are criminals, or, you know, sort of, um, who are caught criminals, um, uh, who um, we feel more okay with uh, really with raping and joking about raping, finding it funny. Uh, so think about how that, um, how the media portrays that in this article. The second article um, had to do with um, newspaper coverage and female victims of crime and how a story is um, told, how a story is presented, how that may affect a reader's 
impression of that person. The facts of the case remain the facts of the case, but how that person is covered changes how we view them. Uh, and then the last, uh, the last category has to do with not men or women, but both, and how um, um, how the media portray um, people who are victimized, um, people who are offenders in crime in the media. So. Putting all those things together, media studies being something that looks at not crime per se, but how we portray crime, I'd just like you to think about where crime and gender show up in your world uh, when it comes to the media. What movies do you watch? What TV shows do you watch? What music do you listen to? And how is gender portrayed when it comes to criminal behavior? Um, smoking weed or snorting coke or... Um, hurting people, um, assaulting with weapons or without weapons, or killing someone, or rape, for example. Where does that show up in your world, and how does gender change the presentation of the person doing the crime, or being victimized by the crime, or, or uh, policing the crime, if you will? In Blackboard, you'll see that there's a set of discussion boards where I ask you to take a look at some music videos. You're not stuck looking at those particular videos. I'm maybe not up as much as I should be on uh, popular music or videos uh, or uh, movies or something like that. Um, and so if you have ones that interest you uh, or that you noticed gender popping up, um, I'd like you to talk about those. Maybe go onto YouTube and find a video and share it with us. Um, there was something else I wanted to say. Oh, um, there's a film called Dream Worlds. I believe we're up to the third version of it. There's Dream Worlds 1, Dream Worlds 2, and Dream Worlds 3. That uh, I highly recommend. If you were in my criminology class, you may have seen a portion of it. Uh, if you'd like to do an extra credit on this film, the Montclair Library has it. I don't know if it's up on Netflix or where you can get it elsewhere, but I do know that the Montclair Library has it. Uh, it has to do with the portrayal, in this case, of women in popular culture and women as um, sexualized bodies, if you will. Women as reduced to their sexual selves. Um, you know, not wearing many clothes, um, reduced to simply bodies rather than any uh, particular person that has a you know, personality or anything like that. Um, but a body to be manipulated by a male. And how that can um, really play into real life. That it isn't just, I guess my point is, is that it's not just about how the media misinterprets so it will buy more stuff. But uh, I want to use a word called reify. To reify something is to make something that's not real into something that is real. So that this, um, the Dream Worlds film, I actually find that it has a very effective section where it shows there was a, a parade in New York City where men and women were walking around, so it was summertime, and um, there was a woman, there were a number of women who ended up being assaulted, sexually assaulted, um, in a way that the movie makes a very compelling case that people were tossing water on them, uh, grabbing them in ways that is shown in music videos as being something enjoyable to women, that women love having water thrown on them and they look sexy with the water dripping down and whatever it is, but that in real life then that practice, that idea that women enjoy this is reified and it happens in real life but then it doesn't look so pretty because the women didn't really enjoy it. Now, Dream World's focus is very much on women, but I'd like you, in that this is a gender in crime class and not a women in crime class, I'd also like you to think about how are men portrayed in music, in film, in, um, what am I missing, in TV, that um, is perhaps not the way you might behave, for example, um, that creates an idea of what it means to be a man and what it means to be a woman um, that isn't necessarily true, but then may get turned into something real in real life. Is, for example, everybody uh, that I've ever met loves Law & Order SVU, or well, my dad doesn't like it, but most people like Law & Order SVU pretty solid, right? How does Elliot behave in a way that is what we are supposed to act like as men uh, versus how Olivia behaves as what women are supposed to act like as women? How does the media show us 
how we are supposed to behave? How does it create a script that we are supposed to watch and emulate um, to be a real man or a real woman? And then how does that intersect with crime? Uh, that women who wear short skirts are sluts who then bring on their own victimization. If we are taught that by the media, perhaps then in real life, we might be less likely to wear a short skirt. How about men? If men who cry are seen as weak, um, then we are going to try not to cry in our real life if we are going to act like a real man. So the media, we can laugh it off as something that is um, just something we watch on TV, but not only does it reflect how we view men and women, but then it also can be reflected back in our behavior. Um, so I'd like you to really be thinking about that as you work on your worksheets. Um, the worksheet that is due is for you to watch some sort of a movie or a TV show of your choice, but you must watch it again. If you've seen it already, you have to watch it again. And you are to then um, fill out the worksheet. Think about it. Don't just fill it out thoughtlessly. I'd like you to really take some time to pay attention to what you see and how it either reflects or does not what we've learned over the course of a semester about what's real. Again, thinking about law and order, you know, a thoroughly unscientific observation is that the perpetrator is relatively often a young 12-year-old girl murdering someone. It's just not that common in real life. It makes for a great TV show because you never suspect her, right? But then at the end, it's not reality. So how does that then make people think about 12-year-old girls, perhaps? And then also, then, how does that perhaps shape your behavior when you stop watching that TV show? How does it shape how you react to your world and teach you about how you are supposed to act? And lest you react to that and go, oh, it doesn't teach me anything. Stop for a few minutes, think about it a little bit more. Whom in that show do you want to be like? And how does that change your behavior? I was watching <laughs> I was watching a Blondie video last night, if you know the band Blondie. New music, basically, new music out. And I, I remember watching her and looking at her and how cool Debbie Harry, to me at least, looked. And I remember t having her put on her sunglasses and being like, oh man, I want sunglasses like that. Because I want to be like her in that sense, that she's so self-confident, um, and uh, or whatever it was, right? That, Pay attention to your instinct and how you react to those things, okay? Now, after this topic, you have simply uh, to focus on a question of synthesis and a posting to a discussion board called the Synthesis Discussion Board. Again, I'd like you to really sit with this and figure it out. I know it's the end of the semester. I know you're probably exhausted with all the other work that you have to do. But try to take some time to really sit with what you've learned this semester, putting it together. A synthesis means a putting together, creating something from a number of different things. Put together everything that we've learned and see how you are going to leave this semester having learned something new about gender and crime and how they come together. Um, and give that a posting on the discussion boards. All right? Please stop by. If you would like to talk about anything, I'll be here well through the end of the semester. Uh, send me an email. Um, let's talk, okay? Uh, and there's one other thing I wanted to say. Oh, you'll be soon getting an email from me about evaluating this course. Um, I have been assured that it is ethical practice to offer extra credit for people who complete the um, evaluation of the course. I will not know what you fill out, and I do not get um, a confirmation when you fill out that evaluation. I, that's, you know, whatever you say about this course is com completely confidential and anonymous. However, mm -hmm. if you put together, um, if you give me a screen capture of your confirmation, uh, I will add uh, a grade to your book reaction paper. Uh, so if you need help learning how to do that, then send me a quick email and I will, uh, I'll show you how to do a screen capture and we will uh, we'll figure it out, alright? So as soon as you get that email, uh, if you would, fill it out. It helps me to adjust this course to make it better. Um, and, uh, and that's all. Alright, bye everybody. Enjoy your day uh, and I hope I'll get to see you all soon.